What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and today I am titling it Confessions of a Glidecam User. <laughs> when people are getting started in video, I tend to see a lot of people just running straight to a gimbal. And if you don't know what a gimbal is by now, pretty much everyone and their mother has one, so you should know what it is. Uh, even people are using them on vacations with their iPhone. Uh, but basically, it just be like an electronic stabilizer. I've been taking video series for a little over two years as a business, and I just bought my first gimbal. That's something that you don't really see every day. Normally, that's people's first purchase besides the camera, at least that I've seen. I've always kind of had like a negative taste in my mouth about gimbals just because to me, I've always seen it as, oh, that doesn't take skill to operate. When you see beginners using them and they think the footage looks good, but from an experienced eye, you can see like the unnecessary bouncing that they're maybe not noticing or don't know how to get rid of. And there's just some looks that, I don't know, it just looks robotic and unnatural. And to me, I just have never really taken to it. And also my uh, old mentor, Jacob Owens, <laughs> around the time that I was looking at getting a gimbal, he made his infamous video, why gimbals are the worst. Um, and it was basically just talking about how, you know, like gimbals are a tool and they are only to be used when necessary. Just like anything else in film, uh, video, whatever, like you don't use a prism for every photo you're gonna take. You don't use a zoom lens for every job that you have. There's just a million different tools out there for us creatives to use and you don't use them for every time, but some people fall into the trap of, oh, I always want this stable footage, and I'm not trying to bash people for what they do. It's not my taste to always be doing that. So basically, my confessions as a glide cam user is that uh, this DJI Ronin is actually way harder to use than I thought it would be. So after all that internal judgment that I had in my head, my preconceived notions, I learned that it's actually kind of difficult to use and I was like, gosh dang it, now I'm now I'm kind of embarrassed. And it's funny because I was listening to a Black with No Cream podcast recently and they were talking about how gimbals are actually harder to use than you think and I was listening to that, I was like, yeah right, whatever. <laughs> so I got this and it's actually been rather difficult. I used this gimbal the other day on a video shoot with my friend Jake. We did a Tesla review video and I'm going to play that clip right now. Anyways, I didn't use the gimbal for every shot in there, which I think is what people should be doing because it's just a tool to get certain types of shots. It just took me a minute to get used to and it like I'm still not proficient with it. I need more practice. I'm just going to compare it with the glide cam. And if you don't know what a glide cam looks like, that is a glide cam. Let me first start by saying that the gimbal, yes, while it is hard, it is not nearly as hard as the glide cam to get introduced to. I started with the glide cam uh, over a year ago and oh my god, it was so hard to figure out how to balance it, operate it. You're holding it with one hand and you're balancing with the other one. I've got the Canon 1DX Mark II heavy camera so I need a lot of weight to balance that out. There's just so many things that could go wrong while you're using it that could mess up your shot and so if you're trying to do a one take music video it's super hard to get that proficient. The Ronin S is way easier to balance. It took me uh, like 20 minutes at first but now when I go and do it since I've got it pretty much set up it doesn't take long. It takes me a couple minutes at most but one of the things that I'm not liking right now because I'm new to it is there are so many functions on the Ronin S and it's just going to take more tweaking and fine tuning because they it comes with an app and you can change the sensitivity of the joystick, you can change the inversion so if you click left it's actually going right or have it go left when you click left. Uh, which I think that was my initial problem. If I'm walking this way around someone, then I should be pointing the joystick in the same way to make it turn. It's just stuff like that that I'm gonna have to work out. But my favorite function is the roll. 
that this thing can do. When I saw people start using the roll and just the different applications that you can do with it, I was sold on the gimbal immediately. I, I knew that I wanted it. Eventually, I finally got around to getting it. But the roll is that first shot in that Tesla video that you saw. So freaking sick. Ugh. So when would you use a glide cam as opposed to a gimbal? Well, for me, I'm gonna be using the gimbal if I do real estate videos, if I am shooting a short film and I need more of a Hollywood slider, just very smooth push into something, that's when I will be using the gimbals and then maybe even for one take music videos once I get better with it. That way I don't mess up as easy as I would with the glide cam. All it takes is just for you to accidentally hit the bottom of the glide cam, this part right here um, with your leg and then your shots off balance and like that happens to me a lot or it gets caught on the shirt or something and then your shots just messed up overall i really like the gimbal but right now if i was doing a paid shoot i would still feel more comfortable with my glide cam just need more practice with it mainly this video i just wanted to uh give gimbal operators some props because i didn't think it was going to be this uh, difficult to get used to and learn, but hey, that is how everything goes in this industry is everything takes practice. You gotta put in the work first before you get good at something, so that's what I plan on doing. All right, guys, if you like this video, go ahead and leave a like, and then comment which one do you like better, the glide cam or the gimbal, and then also, if you're feeling really froggy, let me know if you've had trouble getting used to one or both of these film tools. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in the next one.